Hello again. Um, again, it's Eliyahu from Elijah's Cove, and uh, it's really a great honor and privilege uh, for me to have um, today as a guest Bracha Seri. Bracha is a famous writer here in Israel. She's won the the Israel Prize, uh, the Prime Minister's Prize for Literature, the Levi Eshkol Prize, and she's the author of nine books. She's also a seer, an amazing mystic, and a prophetess. So um, it's a little bit like interviewing an Old Testament prophet for me. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, how are you today, Bracha? I feel cheerful now. That's what I said. I feel the mo the sun comes like in, in such a beautiful day. Oh, after, we have a after a few day. after a few days of cold and days. <laughs> Hallelujah! We have a beautiful day. Yeah. Um. So, Bracha, tell me a little bit about your books and what it is you write about. What I'm <laughs> almost writing about myself. <laughs> okay. But the thing is, I'm also a teacher in my profession. Is a teacher. Of what? And, uh, I'm a Hebrew teacher, but also in general, I have a diploma for high school uh, and uh, and for grade. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. But also high school. High school and college, and uh, to teach in primary school. Yeah. Yes. So I have all these diplomas, and the, when I was uh, trying to read the uh, po poets' books, I didn't understand anything. <laughs> and I in in in. Uh, in, in linguistics, so, you know, in languages, I, but I, I could not understand anything, and I thought that I want to write books, simple books for myself that I can understand. Uh, well, you know, I think a writer, um, <laughs> not that I'm a writer yet, but maybe one day, he has to write first and foremost to please himself. Because I didn't find any book that will <laughs> satisfy me, <laughs> okay. so I had to write, and I... Well, apparently your books satisfy people because uh, they're commonly taught in universities throughout Israel, I understand. Yeah. And um, so tell me a little bit more about what's in these books, if you can. It's, uh, it goes, you know, like deep, deep and to the truth, simple truth of things that it's like we take it for granted, all these things, and people don't even mention it, they don't say it. Okay. You know, the good and the bad, but because it's so obvious and this is life, and they accept it, okay, this is life. But I, for me, it's, it's amazing that a, a kid, you know, everything is a, a miracle. What you see in in the morning, every Everything. moment. Every Everything moment. Is I mean, who could explain it? I mean, there's no explanation. How uh, our bodies are these enormously, enormously miraculous instruments that con that contain our souls. And who could explain what a soul is? And the world is so beautiful. You Even know. If, if you take a flower or. Uh, a stone or little thing, or a tree of course is uh, a tree was always my friend. Like uh, we had a tree in Yemen, and I told tree, and that was the yes. girl. So yes, I told yes. him all my secrets because yes. he can tell God. Uh. <laughs> yes. so, so for me, the tree kept all the all my secrets. I had. To I didn't have anyone that I can tell you secrets. So he was my friend. It, you know, uh, I'm reading a book now called uh, The Return of Merlin by Deepak Chopra, the, mm. fam the famous yeah. Deepak Chopra. It's an amazing, brilliant, deep novel about the return of Merlin. And it says in that, I just read the other day, uh, somebody, one of the characters say that trees 
are the beings closest to man because, well, for whatever reason, they, they're very, very close to us. So now you're telling me that your, your good buddy was, was a tree. And they have spirits, don't they? Yeah, and they, I, of course. I mean, they are connecting Earth and God. Like for me, are. this, uh, this, they were, it, it's amazing what I could see with the trees, what they changed. You know what? If, I'm not, uh, if you don't joke about it, but I, and when I pray in the, in the field, and I see uh, the teething bow to me, trees, yes. it's like they oh. listen to me and they react, and I see that they understand everything, but they keep secrets. Yes, they keep secrets, don't they? And you can come and hug them, and you tell them all the stories, I would be like, uh, give them gifts like my hair or something, put yes. under the tree yes. and uh, promise the tree that I will come back from the States for instance and uh, hug <laughs> the tree again <laughs> because I know, so I, I do the moving out here and then, but then I have to come and return to the <laughs> earth and tell them, see I was there, I brought you some gift from <laughs> And I took pictures of them, like more than uh, taking pictures of my friends. They were my friends. Well, that's, that's beautiful. And you know, we're touching on one of my favorite subjects here. Because I know, I believe and I know that there are nature spirits. Mm -hmm. And there are fairies. And you know, once human beings lived in harmony and mutual love and recognition uh -huh. with the spirits of nature, the fairies and the devas, and um, and we've got, we've lost that ability to live in harmony and love with these beautiful beings who are helping us, and who um, and um, and I believe we're coming back to that, and that more and more kids say uh, when they uh, little kids still have the, this uh, magic touch. Uh, yes, and this vision of uh, between the worlds. And uh, when you were growing up in, in Teman, uh, you, you saw, you once told me a story about a family of, what shall I call them, fairies, or gnomes, or, or, <laughs> or, or gods who were living in the house, right? Mm -hmm. they were, were they living in your house? Sure. I, not their father because he went to work. Okay. <laughs> the mother and the children. Okay. But they live uh, in. They hide uh, through the day, and then we leave them alone for to, uh, for the night. And I saw the mother uh, baking from uh, like dust ever. Like a, 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 a baking uh, pitot uh, and gives her uh, children, they were around in the kitchen. Yes. And <laughs> I did not disturb them. And sometimes they also borrow something, like the, uh, a key or something. And they, and my mother used to say, like, Allah is thorn, Mr. Uh, God will protect us and them. And they, she calls them our neighbors. Hey, Sophie, how beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I love that. And it's very important. And uh, they would help out. Wouldn't they help out? With, uh, like, you, want, you told me a story about how there was a poor family and they helped to make the food. Or Can you tell me uh, about that? It's a, uh, I think she, she was a widow and she had uh, to. Uh, grind uh, all, you know, they had to grind everything, so... Yes, they had to the grind wheat, uh, the wheat. And, uh, and uh, she was, if, if a woman is divorced or a widow, then she she has to support her children. Yes. So she did this job for many families. Yes. They would bring bring the the wheat and she, she does, she wakes up at night to... To grind. To grind. And uh, so they were very, very poor and it was hardly for, uh, for them what to eat. These are your neighbors? I was told by neighbors uh, okay. about this. I don't know. Okay. 
but anyway, and uh, and then we say, woman, uh, whenever she comes to the ground, it's da downstairs so, uh, to to, to grind. Yes. With the uh, with the big stones, you know, stone in a stone, and it's heavy. So she would pick up. Uh, in Yemen, of course. The children uh, can uh, put, pick up the ch children of this and say, for, sorry for removing them out because she needs to, to grind. She wait, was wait. Very, way, very nice to... So wait, you're saying she knew about the fairy children? Uh, what children did she move out of the room? She had to move the children. What kind of children? Human or fairy? Fairy. So she, but she, she will not hurt them because she doesn't. Uh, she needs. She's apologizing for disturbing. Okay. okay. At night, taking their time and uh, moving them, uh, catching them. Okay, but she's a human person. She's she's a human, right? Yeah. Okay, so she would see them and politely move them and get about her work. And always leave them uh, left like leftovers right. or something to use to to eat. Right, I understand they eat the, en the they eat the essence of the food. Yeah. They don't uh, like the um, the material will still be there, but they eat the essence of it. Um, that's what I understand, like the energy of it. Um, so okay, a and and what about her? They would help her. Is that right? Uh, the mother would do it uh, after that. The mother said uh, to her, come and said, uh, you are nice, you are kind to my children, so I want to help you, but uh, on one condition, that you don't tell anybody, your neighbors don't, because when, if you tell them, then will disappear. They disappear from publicity. They're, so they're shy. So she kept the secret, but then people came like, asking, how how come that you have all this strength to do uh, so much grinding? So much grinding, and the, and she becomes richer, and uh, and then it's like she she could not stand. Uh, she had to tell them because they forced them. Uh, okay, and and who is helping you? And you knew. I understand her because as a, as a widow or divorced. She even because it's a bit suspicious. Who is coming to, to do yes, the job? Yes. So she had to admit yes. this is <laughs> this person. And they so they disappeared. And did you know you knew this woman, yes? Or you just heard I, I heard it from my neighbors. Uh, they, they come uh, also different stories. But it was a story about somebody that you knew? They knew I did not. Okay, but in any case, you saw the family in your home, and they were the cohabitants of your home. Right. And uh, so you grew up with this, you know, uh, with this mother. You can't uh, curse, you can't get mad, because uh, it's uh, hurting them or something. Yes. You have to be nice and kind, and God, like, God bless them and us. And your mother obviously saw, knew them, knew about them and saw them because she told you about them. Yes? Your yes, mother? I mean, it was a regular st story. And also when we walked, we had to, um, th there were many habits, like if you run the stairs, you have to say Shema Israel. Uh, 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 be careful, them. be careful. Uh, uh, Shaidan. Shaidan is like uh, not the de de demons little or something. De yeah, they call little uh, demons. Anyway, what we call fairies. You, in but English you, you move, move uh, from my way. You, you tell them, you warn them before you run. Uh, me, I did it all the time, and we say also Shema Israel in in uh, Yemen. In Yemen, in the but they were my friends also. They came to visit me through the, I don't know, windows or something. I saw them all the time. How wonderful. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm envious because I would, I would love to uh, see them. But, you know, we're, we're moving to a time when, again, we will uh, live in conscious harmony with these beings. And um, 
You see them, you see them. I think, uh, I mean, we grow to, the thing is, I had to grow back to what I was as yes. a kid. <laughs> yes, I understand. <laughs> because there, it was like for few years at least, or after the university, I was still like uh, trying hard to be uh, like Western uh, yes. thinker and yes. uh, <laughs> research, and I had, and I could not uh, appreciate what my mom uh, was that she was a, a poet say, singing all the time. Tell me about that. People came and she would, people would come and she would be like a a spiritual leader. Is that right? You yeah, know? that was like a club of Moadon. And every Shabbat, uh, once I. Ca- I counted the twenty-eight uh, women visiting her. Everyone brings her coffee or tea from home, oh, <laughs> and sometimes nice. from the uh, yeah they or and uh, for if there are children that they bring in their pockets uh, gifts for the kids, uh, okay. uh, almonds and raisins. Okay. So she was like their teacher, is that right? Yeah, and she would tell them about Jerusalem, about news. I mean, she was the news reporter, and uh, <laughs> she brings the news <laughs> from what she saw. She visits her her family in uh, other places. Uh, okay. And she comes and tells them. And, and she but it wasn't in a nice way. It was like... Uh, it was in rhymes and it was nice. It oh, was a storytelling and a poet. I mean, that's she could not talk otherwise. She had to 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 speak in, in rhymes, and she, that's that's the way she did. Amazing, Ama- You know, <laughs> um, the very little is heard about the very rich spiritual life of the women in um, in the Jewish tradition and. So she was like their teacher, their rabbi, in yeah. many ways. My, my father was a rabbi, but you, uh, men come to him, and also women come to take advice, and it's like wow. judging and psychologist, <laughs> like everything, every uh, with sicknesses. So uh, we had an open house, and people come wow, whenever wow. they have trouble, or they just want, like when they wanted to open up, like... Uh, so she, they come and tell her, and she kept secrets. Uh, I'm secrets. sure. She could. She had to be. She was peaceful. She could not, you know, to hear and uh, be involved too much, to make the others get angry. So yes, yes. So um, and she would do healing as well on people? Was she it's a more, uh, It's more uh, spiritual, uh, psychological. My father was uh, blessing the, the oil for, uh, for some other women who did the healing. What he is an oil? Was so, I'm sorry, what do you mean an oil? Like uh, olive, uh, not only oil, olive oil, uh, the oil ah, for, it, for it, massages. It, and olive oil, yes, he would bless the olive oil. Yeah. Like, like I know a Kabbalist who blesses the olive oil, and he tells people to rub it on their body, and it, uh, it's yeah, very Yeah, except powerful. that my father did not do uh, all that Kabbalistic, but that's they ha- they knew also from uh, uh, plants what to take. Uh, what I mean, it? like from Harambam, or they knew. Yes. they learned a lot uh, of using the. The Rambam is Moses Maimonides. Uh, the great Spanish sco- uh, Jewish scholar and healer from the uh, well uh, before the time of Columbus, so the 13th century, 14th century. Yeah. The, um, so your father was a rabbi. Yes, but he refused to be here in Israel officially. He, they were never paid by uh, the rabbis were not paid in Yemen. Yes. So it's only for mitzvot. You don't for the uh, mitzvah. For the good deed, the commandment. Okay. Okay. So how did he make his living? Uh, from uh, fixing the uh, primusim tiliot. Uh, T- uh, huh? Burners. Uh, ah, burners. Oil, uh, oil uh, burners. Okay. And uh, also nargilot uh, she'asu. Nargilot, uh, yes. What they, they in the Arab 
In the Arab countries, they smoke the nargila. Uh, the, uh, so they worked for with, uh, with, uh, with the metal, uh, with the metal, with the copper uh, yes. and the uh, kesef, uh, silver, silver and the copper. Oh, he was a metal worker, Mr. Yeah. Silversmith. Wow. Yeah. And um, so you had a lot of brothers, and uh, you were one of how many children, and how many brothers and sisters were there? You no, know, my mother was uh, she. She was pregnant twelve times. That's what Whoa. she told me. Okay. And uh, no, eighteen times. She was eighteen pregnant. times pregnant. But uh, uh, twelve were born okay. and died uh, most of the time when they were uh, very when they were children, little children. Yes, those were the and days. And when uh, sister died after she got married at fourteen, she was married and she had a baby, and so she died oh, from she's giving birth. Oh, uh, well, at least she had a baby. Thank no, but the, the, the baby died, too. Ah, so she was sad. She was 14. You know, so whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. It used to scare me. I was afraid of baby. I bet. I bet. And you have a beautiful daughter who's also my friend, uh, Nitzchia, and your grandma. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have two, two granddaughters. Two granddaughters. Okay, so, so how many... Children were growing up in. I mean, you had a lot of brothers, correct? Or we were uh, from my s my father's side. We were over two hundred. Uh, Whoa! Um, people uh, also. N I think not including their uh, grandchildren. Um, it's just. Uh, wow! Two generations, and also from my from my ma my mom's. So about two hundred on your mom, cousins and yeah, but it's, uh, it's, it's and growing and now you yeah, see I all bet. this. Uh, <laughs> and now the there are generation there are yes. some and we have the fourth generation. So, but in your in your home, you grew up with your sister who died when she was young, and brothers too. How many and brothers? And five brothers and, and one my sister that uh, raised me raised me. Because we had to take care of you know, each other, and of I had course. to help uh, raising two younger uh, so, uh, sons, uh, uh, brothers. brothers. Yes, but but you mentioned Braha that you were frustrated as a girl because you weren't able to study the Torah and to learn in the the yeshiva like the boys, like your brothers and like your father. But we knew. I knew it from. My uh, uh, uncles and aunts that women could uh, learn here in school, it could go to school in Israel. You knew it, yes. Yeah, we we got letters from them, so I knew that uh, they learn the women could learn. So, at what age did you get to Israel? When I was nine. When you were nine. And and there, I was one year in uh, Russia in uh, in intense. Uh, Oh, I mean, in uh, intent, uh, when the um, when the Yemenites came and uh, the Jews from the from the east, the Iraqis and the Iranians, they had, there was no not enough housing, so there were like ten cities. So you uh, that was it. You lived in one of those places. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So. Um, but we knew it from uh, you know, reading maybe newspapers and also from the Bible that it's. Uh, Obviously, we live in tents, like in the bubble. Yes. <laughs> Everything was like normal, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was normal, it was normal. <laughs> and it could be a lot of fun for a kid, I could imagine. I mean, the adventure of it, I suppose. It was tough. And it, it was, was tough, too. Because we, we had a nice house in Yemen and in Sana. And to come from, yeah, that must have been tough. Three levels. The um, house and then to live in one little tent, and my mom had to take care of my brother, young, who was uh, six months, so they would not send him to, well, I don't know, to whoever <laughs> yeah, they wanted no. light, light and the blonde kids or something. Yes, there was a scandal here in Israel with disappearance of uh, 
uh, Yemenite babies, right? Mm -hmm. to, and they were given to uh, to uh, families that were looking for children here in Israel, correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, like it happened to the American Indians, by the way. Uh, the same thing happened in the United States with American Indian babies who were stolen and given to uh, rich uh, families who were looking for babies. So, um, and the light, light skin uh, was preferred. And the light skin was preferred. Um, like Ethiopians don't suffer from this. Yes, the, 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 yes. it doesn't happen with the Ethiopian. Uh, it doesn't happen now, please God. I really, I, I, I haven't heard. It happened now in the 50s. Yeah. Uh, and it, I haven't heard about it happening since then. Yeah. So hopefully. Yeah. Um, but you were not even, but it was frustrating, was it? To be a girl and not to be able to study the, the Torah, the yeshiva, and the yeshiva like your brothers and like your father. They were jealous, so uh, my brothers were j did not want so much to learn there. Not anyway, what? and they wanted to stay home and eat, uh, <laughs> like near the food or something. Okay. Like, yeah, so that, that was the other way around. Right? But, but you wanted, didn't you? I wanted, so I came uh, with questions all the time, and I had also, I kept all raisins and almonds that I was given from the women to pay <laughs> for my studies <laughs> to my brothers. <laughs> like, okay, I will give you get every uh, thing that I could send in order to learn one wow. letter. <laughs> wow, I mean... Uh, and my father was uh, very uh, happy to teach me uh, also, like uh, explain everything about mitzvot or anything, tell me, I would come and ask all the time, and also I, I was, uh, I think women were, uh, I was a strange girl, I, I did not, uh, it wasn't enough for me to work at home, and I was dreaming all the time, like, okay, it takes me forever to take all this uh, uh, team or all the wheat, and uh, pick up the stones from it, so, Everything was, but I learned calculation with that. Okay. I did all sorts of things. Uh, I think I was, <laughs> I was a good girl. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I heard. I mean, they were not, they were not uh, happy about the, uh, about me. You were a dreamer, Bracha. Yeah. I mean, who else? But a dreamer would go on, uh, and you wanted to learn, and you were a scholar always in your heart. Is mm -hmm. Sure. So you you really conquered the world. I mean, to write nine books and to win such a prestigious prize, like the Levi the Levi Eshkol Prize for Literature. I mean, you've conquered the world. You've uh, you fulfilled your dream. But that was I had all this heavy. I still have heavy like tasks on my shoulders because I could not write my. All uh, my uh, moms, uh, moms, all the, mo the mothers, <laughs> uh, what they they thought there was there was no. I had to write for them, and I had to write it in Hebrew so people understand it. Yes, okay. And uh, all their mourning, all suffering. So I had also, and now I have it all also for for men, and uh, I I have all this. I don't know, all the problems of the world, at least Jewish uh, problems on my shoulders. So. And I, want to, I want to talk about that. Um, well, I know that um, you get, well, maybe we get a little bit into your dreams, okay, and the messages you get. Uh, now, Bracha, like I said, is like an Old Testament prophet, and um, you get messages in your dreams and in your waking life as well, not just the dreams, isn't that right? Uh, what, when writing, I get messages and then it, it, it's like a, a prophecy. Okay. Many times I wrote about uh, things like even in Berkeley, I came and wrote about the uh, burning of the hills and it happened and I yes. was just so guilty. And also, uh, well, I can't remember in that Adama. Earthquake. Earthquake. Before so the big one in 1989, right? So, yeah, it was uh, so. 
and I wrote about it before. And it was so weird, I did not want to write said things, bad things. But then, it's even when I write it as a joke, joking or writing in a way of uh, prophets would write it or something, and then it happens. It, it's so scary. But your role is to, is to pray and to hopefully soften the, these blows. Um, so that's what they have you do when you get a, a warning about something like this. Your job is, is to pray, like to read Tehillim, to read Psalms. They Psalms. Isn't tell me, now they tell me where, <laughs> what song I have to read. Yes. <laughs> Not only the dream. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> today I woke up with, the, I think this is where I feel also cheerful. I uh, got uh, the message. That I, I I was with other people. Everyone was going to some direction, and I was going to in India, which means Hodu in Hebrew. Hodu means like uh, gratefulness. That's but also thank uh, thank Hodu uh, Lashem uh, Kitov. To thank God because it, all the goodness, and it also means India. India. Hodu means India in the Hebrew language. Right, so I uh, I knew after that, like, okay, I'm going to where it's good, <laughs> that I want to, to thank, where thank you, God. Where you have a lot of reason to thank God, you're going to hold you, which means thankfulness, or yes, okay. So, I, uh, and then what happened is I, I know I read, uh, I read because I learned Hasidut, and I uh, I was told uh, to read uh, every day's uh, songs. Psalms. And so I I read of this uh, Hebrew, the Hebrew date, uh, which means uh, 28. Yes. Uh, Koah. 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 Power. Power. Shalom, Mitukim. Okay. So I read the uh, uh, songs of, of the day of twenty eight, and then I yeah, and then I and I found uh, this mismo, this song with the uh, with the hodu hodu lashem kitov. Okay, it's the. But we're gonna go to a break, a bracha after the break. We'll we'll sing it, and also I want to ask you a little bit about Berkeley, uh, maybe even before you start reading it, if yes, that's okay. So. Well, uh, we have a couple of minutes now. What brought you to Berkeley? Well, I was... Uh, I wanted to go follow my children. They wanted to meet their father, uh, who was a hippie. Yes. I was... <laughs> in, in Berkeley, where else would he go? Yeah. <laughs> so, it was in Los Angeles, but anyway, okay. I had... Uh, but my daughter lived near uh, Berkeley, so I went to, went to visit her, and I had friends there, and uh, and then my son, and my son came from Los Angeles, uh, and uh, we stayed in the same apartment. My daughter lived in San Francisco, so I had to to uh, to make uh, kosher food. To make Which kosher is, food, yeah. It's hard in Berkeley to yeah, to okay. Farm. And so, and also I had to er organize every Pesach or every Passover. Yes. I had to organize friends for uh, seder, and I wanted. I started teaching them to read it uh, in uh, in Yemenite, Hallelujah, instead of Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, so we read the part of uh, the Haggadah, the Seder. With the, the Passover uh, story, which we read on the, on the Passover Seder. So we yes. did it uh, in English and uh, in uh, Hebrew, Israeli Hebrew, and some in part in Yemenite. Uh, okay. And I, I taught the Yemenite uh, tradition so that we could enjoy, uh, <laughs> we had to create our Yes. <laughs> so I had to bring all my home, everything that I could, to Berkeley to 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 you know for my children to feel at home. 
And, and you studied at the university, didn't you? I studied only for six months, then I discovered that I'm not, I was told even that I can make a doctor, a PhD, and uh, also I had uh, a job offered, and then I thought it was so boring, I could not uh, do it. I, I read the Shira Shirin, Song of Songs, songs. Okay. and I understand the, the writer, or I, I knew, I felt exactly how they should be, and this is, a, I, it's not I, uh, academic research did not yes. did not yes. uh, satisfy me yes. anymore, I'm and not I surprised. and so I did not uh, when I it, when this was a big dream all the time like okay studied the eight langu uh, languages and I wanted to be a professor in the university. Yes. Yes. But then, I, when my father died, I was uh, so. I felt like, okay, I have to this burden on my. Uh, of the old Yemenite, di like dying, and yes. I have to bring the. whatever I can from tradition. Yes. If I agree or not, it doesn't matter. But I had to tell all these stories. Yes. Because this was so much that I could not uh, be satisfied with discussing uh, or uh, arguments. I know the dryness of, academic. Uh, of academia is so dry. Um, yeah. And um, of course the author of Psalm of Psalms was Solomon, mm -hmm. King Solomon, who, who was the wisest of men. And, um, and the Keys of Enoch talks about the Book of Psalms as the Bible within the Bible, uh, the most Absolutely. The holy of the holies. So, um, so anyway, um, maybe we'll take a pause here. Okay.